Since the beginning of time, the Earth has been the scene of constant natural spectacles. First, the violent formation of the Earth's crust along with the atmosphere that surrounds it, then later the gradual appearance of the different animal and plant species and their permanent struggle to survive the changes in the climate. in this genetic combat for survival in which many others disappeared forever. But around three million years ago, a phenomenon took place which radically altered the climate and had a decisive effect on the ecosystems in which humans were then evolving. The Northern Hemisphere was subjected to great variations in temperature, while in Africa, the forests receded giving way to the savannas and the prairies of grasses. Our homo ancestors began to eat more meat than any other primate. This change in diet enabled them to reduce the length of the digestive tract and increase the size of the brain. Initially as scavengers, those first humans shared the planet with enormous, efficient beasts, which they observed in fear. Later, they too became hunters, and fear turned to admiration. Hunting man pursued the great herds of herbivores, gradually increasing his knowledge of his natural surroundings. Very soon, the human mind began to associate the different species with their supposed powers, and so the totemic animals were born. The human brain's capacity for abstraction meant we went one step further, seeing in animals the incarnation of spirits and gods. The human intellect sought to manipulate this magic world, and in the depths of ritual caves, man drew the animals whose spirits could bestow their powers on him. The world would never be the same. A subjective reality had been born inside the head of the last primate, the bison would no longer be just an animal. From now on, man's companions in biological evolution also became part of his rights. The strange relationship between man and nature became a struggle for domination, a struggle which still continues today. In a strip which goes from India to Australia and including all of Indonesia, lives the largest reptile in the world. It is the marine crocodile, an animal which the peoples of the southern hemisphere could not help but notice. Weighing over a ton and more than seven meters in length, it is responsible for more attacks on people than any other animal in its area of distribution. It can live in rivers, estuaries or in the open sea and its diet includes literally anything that moves. An animal like this was already here when over 40,000 years ago, human beings reached northern Australia. Immediately, the largest predator in the area became a divinity for the human colonists, who observed in fascination the powers of this great reptile. The power of its jaws, its size, its ability to appear or disappear without being seen, and its terrifying appearance all led to the marine crocodile being elevated from the status of a hunter to that of the creator of all things. In the Philippines, in Borneo, in Timor, or in New Guinea, there was no human culture living in close contact with water that did not consider the marine crocodile to be a god. Today, at the start of the third millennium, it retains its status in the basin of the river Sebik in New Guinea. The Garmut drum calls all the inhabitants of the village because in the Tambaran, or House of the Spirits, the crocodile men ceremony is about to begin. The marks on the skin identify those who have already been possessed. Tonight, the great crocodile will return to the village in search of new warriors. Oh, no. 
This is the so-called crocodile nest. In it, the water drums will sound, one male, the other female, to call to the spirit of the king of the crocodiles. The ceremony begins. These people believe that the crocodile created the earth from the water and in it rent an enormous fissure with which it copulated. From this union were born the plants, the animals and man. When it opened its enormous mouth, the lower jaw fell to earth and the upper jaw formed the sky. Outside the nest, everyone is dancing, unable to see what is happening inside. The atmosphere becomes increasingly tense and finally the warrior is led to the Tambaran where his blood will be let. As dusk approaches, the frenzy increases while the songs and dances grow more intense. Very soon, the spirit of the great crocodile will answer the call of his people. The uninitiated believe that the crocodile creator will devour the young man and regurgitate him converted into a man. For this reason, his skin will forever bear the marks of the enormous teeth of the great totem. In reality, he is cut with razors, a painful ordeal leaving scarifications resembling scales. Whatever the explanation, the fact is the crocodile guard which rules the lives of these people now has a new disciple and they all feel secure beneath the protection of the greatest power on the planet. Australia. Since the human animal began to think, observation of the wild splendor around him led him to ask questions about the origin of all this. It is curious that despite the lack of humility which characterizes us, no people on earth have ever believed that man created the world. So if not us, who was it? The Australian Aborigines have their own answer, painted on the rocks of their land. The Aborigine culture revolves around these spiritual ancestors from what they call their dream time and is transmitted from one generation to another through these drawings and the oral tradition. The dream time explains the creation of the earth and all the living beings, always accompanied by the magical notes of the sacred instrument, the didgeridoo. <laughs> This is probably the oldest known genesis, or at least the oldest that has reached us still alive in the people that believe in it. This is Namargon, the lightning man responsible for the storms, and this is his wife, Barajin. All the spirits of the Dreamtime voluntarily turned into rocks, mountains and rivers when they had completed their work of creation. Therefore, for the Aborigines, their relation with the land and with the animals that live there is extremely close. They say that the land is their mother, that the eagles are their cousins, and that the trees have blood pumping through them just like us. In short, that we all are one. For over 40,000 years, they have painted on the same rocks time and time again. Even today, some of their designs dating back over 18,000 years remain intact. The stories of the Dreamtime speak of enormous kangaroos now extinct. 
They explain how each living being was created in balance with all others. They tell of the importance of belonging to a whole, in which a rock and an ant are equally significant, in which each ancestral spirit conceals itself in different forms. The old stories are told and sung, are danced and are lived. Some of these paintings are called X-ray art because they represent the animals on the inside. This detailed knowledge of their surroundings enabled the Australian Aborigines to remain for 60,000 years as hunter-gatherers, barely cultivating the land or breeding cattle. Their great merit is that they have survived until now, while other apparently more powerful cultures, such as the Aztecs, the Romans or the Egyptians, disappeared after producing spectacular cultural achievements. Perhaps the simplicity of their philosophy of life based on the importance of nature contains a profound truth which the world would seem to be forgetting. Perhaps the rainbow serpent shown here really does live in the watercourses as they claim. Perhaps the strange animals of Australia are not there by chance. They are certain they can explain it. Everything is clear if you know how to believe in the dream time. On the other side of the planet, in the rainforests of South America, lives an animal whose power was always associated with the fears and desires of all the civilizations that came into contact with it. And it continues to be the king, the largest feline in the Western Hemisphere, the jaguar. The word jaguar comes from the Amazon, where the Guarani Indians spoke of the jaguara, the beast that kills with one leap. The jaguar certainly has all the right ingredients to impress man. It is a solitary creature that prowls around at dawn or dusk. It hides in the thicket and kills with a swift bite, piercing the neck or the skull, instead of strangling its prey like the majority of felines. It is the third largest feline in the world, surpassed only by tigers and lions. The males reach 140 kilos in weight and are draped in shadows. Already 3,200 years ago, the Olmecas spoke of the Jaguar men. The Mayas believed they stood guard over the tombs at night, and the Aztecs had a warrior elite called the Jaguar Knights. Today, the great cat does not occupy as much territory as in the past. When it lived alongside the pre-Inca cultures in Peru, there were Jaguars in the deserts and in the mountains, as well as in the jungles. But the traces of the legend remain. In the symbolic art of the archaeological sites, it still smells of fresh blood. The Mochica people in Peru around 2,200 years ago forged an enigmatic culture in which the jaguar was an important divinity. Everywhere the cruel face of the great cat shows it as a strange deity, the symbol of power. The feline figures appear typically in scenes of sacrifice and torture, such as the so-called decapitator, a sinister figure of the Moche iconography related to the jaguar. In the tomb of the Lord of Sipan, the most important archaeological site so far discovered, disturbing figures were found, such as that of a jaguar copulating with a woman, perhaps another version of the creation myth, or menacing feline heads of golden metal with teeth of red shell. The great jaguara still lives on. 
Many of these finds are still being investigated, but the strange feline deity repeatedly appears in diverse objects from different periods, demonstrating that it was much more important for these people than the cult of the sun later imposed by the Incas. of a jaguar, and below it human sacrifices were performed in honor of the amber-eyed demon. But in some places in Africa, another nightmare remains alive at the beginning of the 21st century. This man is a leopard hunter. He wears the fangs of those he has killed as a warning because his people still fear the silent death. In the villages of the Ivory Coast each year, several people die devoured by the great cat. The relation of many African peoples with the leopards is a strange mixture of hatred and worship, a history which still continues to this very day. Leopard and man kill each other throughout Africa and a considerable part of Asia, as it is the most widespread large cat in the world. It is a solitary animal that hunts in the dark, an efficient opportunist always hidden from sight. There is a vast mythology surrounding the leopard. The name itself, Leopard or Leopard, comes from the mistaken belief that it was a hybrid of the lion and what they call the panther, an archaic term which confuses the black leopards with felines of other species. The wrongly named black panthers are merely cases of melanism, a simple genetic variation of coloring. Here many villages are in clearings in the forest with the branches of the trees literally touching their roofs. People spend almost all their time outside, and there are children everywhere. The leopards are prowlers whose territories cover over 30 square kilometers, and for them a child is no more than easy meat. It is capable of carrying one off before it even has time to cry out. These are not isolated cases. In a place like this, statistics do not exist, but death most certainly does. One animal in Asia is known to have killed over 100 people before being hunted down. And we also find here a universal myth, which in at least 50 documented cases has turned out to be true. Some female leopards have for a time looked after human babies or children they have found near the forest. This phenomenon has occurred in other places around the world with wolves or monkeys, and inspired the popular legend of the leopard child, which in turn gave rise to such well-known fiction stories as those of Mowgli or Tarzan. The man-beast totemic hybrid inspires dread because it combines the worst of both. So the best thing is to befriend the leopard spirit so that it does not carry off your children and so it'll imbue them with its strength and courage. In Africa, this is done by dancing in its honor, and that is why this ritual is so important in this part of the Ivory Coast. Dancers disguised as felines are possessed by the leopard and demonstrate this by making movements whose agility leaves no room for doubt. Only the great spotted devil could move that way. these peoples confer on the leopard makes it at the same time killer and benefactor. Predatory animals have always projected the right image for man to create symbols and allegories of a totemic and mythological nature. In this way, the human mind tries to explain events it does not fully understand, looking for a culprit, a malignant, vengeful spirit which can be held responsible for unexpected deaths or natural disasters.
Dancing in its honor, they try to placate the supposed wrath of the leopard spirit. By thinking of it, they trust it will not attack them, at least not in the near future. But the truth is, the leopard is a hunting animal for which both time and space are running out. Increasingly persecuted, only one thing is sure. The ancient spotted cat will go on killing even as it dies. Millions of years of changes on planet Earth have produced incredible diversity, a variety of settings in which to put to test life's resources for survival. A handful of animal species have proven supremely successful in the selection process imposed by nature. At the head of this list of winners stands man, and when we outgrew the physical world, we began to discover other dimensions inside our own minds. Then we decided to establish an arbitrary scale of values to divide up the other animals into good and bad. What was first admiration and later desire to be like them soon became domination. The totemism which paid homage to the animal and worshipped it changed when man stopped being a hunter-gatherer and from the Neolithic age began to be governed by new socio-economic rules. The mythical halo of the animals almost entirely disappeared in the dominant Western culture, but survived in many others. Now what some call global culture has adopted nature as simply one more consumer product. The new religion of city dwellers is conservationism. The new gods are the species in danger of extinction. But the world still contains some human cultures that dance to the spirits of the forest as these men and women are doing in New Guinea. With their ritual masks, they cross the fire, dance and sing, breaking the silence of the tropical night. The fact is, all human beings feel something special when they enter a forest, when they climb a mountain, or when they swim in the sea. Evolution continues while Homo sapiens threatens to irreversibly change his own home, planet Earth. Perhaps there's not much time left to do what we do best. It's possible that we have very few years ahead of us in which to continue stealing powers. Oh.